that sound. There's only a couple things that sound like this. One being a swarm of pissed off homicidal wasps. But since this isn't a nature channel, in this case, it can only be the sound of open header turbocharged small displacement drag racing imports. Welcome everybody to Bounty Drag Racing's Caribbean International Speedway for a little drag import 101. Today I'm going to show you what you need to know to get started in this virtual world of import drag racing. From choosing the right engine combination to the different starting line procedures for each. If you don't have Bounty Drag Racing and want to give this a try for yourself, you can find it in the Steam store. If you enjoy this stuff or find it useful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up so YouTube knows it's good shit and makes it easier for others to find as well. If this is the kind of stuff you're into, subscribe to the channel for more. Your support helps and it's appreciated. With that said, let's get straight into it. Bounty Drag Racing's imports are made up of two separate types of vehicles. With the base game content, you get three of each to choose from. The slower of these are the modified imports. Think of these as the pro stocks of imports. Purpose built race cars with somewhat stock dimensions and shapes. With the quickest engine combinations, these things are capable of dipping into the 5 second zone. On the extreme end of the imports is... The extreme imports. The modifieds are the pro stocks. These are the pro modifieds of imports. Stretched, streamlined, and packing all sorts of punch with the quickest of the engine combinations capable of running with the actual pro modifieds over the quarter mile. The first thing you need to know if you plan to try these for yourself, no matter which type of car you pick, is which of the 10 available engine combinations you should install in your car. I'm going to make a pass using each of them and give you an idea of how each performs, because the results aren't exactly as you might expect. To do this I'll be using this modified Toyota Supra. I have a tune-up in it capable of running in the fives with the right engines, so I'll be leaving most of the setup alone aside from the transmission gearing and RPM limits. I won't be going much into the setup itself though since Bounty Drag Racing is still in beta and ever evolving. A setup that works for me might not work for you. And with KOD Games currently working on a complete physics overhaul, depending on when you see this, even my setup will be obsolete. I'm going to run through these from slowest to quickest, and you might think that means starting this off with one of the smallest of the naturally aspirated setups. But that's not entirely the case. At least in my hands, after a handful of runs and some gearing tweaks, it's the two rotor on Nitrous. Of all the boost options for the engines and bounty, the Nitrous setups are often completely different from anything else, so it's possible I just didn't give this one enough time. If you're familiar with drag racing and how to stage most cars, then there's nothing special required to bring this or any of the non-turbocharged engine combinations to the starting line. First you roll in until the pre-stage light comes on, if there's an opponent, it's courtesy to wait for them to pre-stage as well. Then you roll in a little more to stage, hold the trans brake, go full throttle, and go on yellow. The two rotor on Nitro so has a 7.41 at an impressive 199 miles per hour. Next up is the naturally aspirated 4 cylinder engine. Same car, more or less the same setup. Again, without a turbo, the staging procedure is straightforward. The unboosted 4 cylinder combo runs a 7.33 at 189 miles per hour. Okay, this is a naturally aspirated 4 rotor engine. You can run any of these engine combinations in any of these imports regardless of brands. So just because it never came as a rotary doesn't mean you can't run one here. The unboosted 4 rotor runs up 7.08 at 197 miles per hour as we get closer to the 6 second zone. Next is what you would think might be the slowest of the engine combinations, the naturally aspirated 2 rotor, but that's clearly not the case here. The unboosted 2 rotor is good for at least the 7.06 at 188 miles per hour with this setup. The quickest of the naturally aspirated engines for Bounty Drag Racing imports is the 3 rotor combo. It's a little strange because while most of these engines run fine in the 8 to 10,000 RPM range or more, this one starts to damage itself just beyond 5500 RPM, so you're going to have to gear this car accordingly with the transmission settings. I 
How about a 6.95 at only 182 miles per hour? Pretty quick for the smallest engine of the bunch. Okay, now it's time to step it up with the turbos. The slowest of the turbo combinations, at least in this car with this setup, is what you might think would be the quickest. And that's the big four rotor combo. The biggest difference between a turbocharged engine and anything else in this game is the engine needs time to build boost pressure before it's at peak power. So you're going to have to approach your starting line procedure a little bit differently to get the most out of the car and to be able to do it consistently. Whether you're alone on the track testing or facing an opponent that's staged and ready to go, it's important to take your time and do your own thing. Once you and your opponent are pre-staged like any other race, instead of rolling the rest of the way in, you should hold the trans brake, build the boost by going full throttle. Regardless of what is or isn't happening in the other lane at this point, I'll wait a count of five, tap a bump button until the car bumps forward into the stage. Then it's game on like any other car when the lights go yellow. The four rotor turbocharged combination putting up a 6.367 at 218 miles per hour in the modified import. Next up is a mighty little turbo two rotor that can. Once again, running a turbo means building that boost. I still see a lot of new players in a hurry to stage and likely wonder why their cars don't run consistently. The Turbo 2 rotor puts up a 6.33 at 219 miles per hour. Next is the four cylinder turbo. I've never really tried this engine before doing this video, so I was actually a little surprised how similar and almost interchangeable it seems to the two rotor combo we just watched. at 218 miles per hour for the turbo four cylinder combo. Next we step it up one more time. If you're going to be running any of these imports in open heads up competition, whether it's a modified import like we've been using here or the quicker extreme imports, you're going to want to be using one of these two combinations. The three rotor turbo and the inline six turbo engines are practically identical to each other in tuning requirements and performance. Speaking of performance, here's the turbocharged inline six. A 595 at 238 miles per hour is a pretty leap from the other turbo combos we've seen so far. Now, not to be outdone, in the last of the import engine combinations to show you is the turbocharged three rotor combo. Like I said, this and the inline six are pretty much interchangeable. If I was picking based off sound, I think I would go with this rotor. A 591 at 230 miles per hour, not bad. If you're into something faster, while well, the extreme imports are a definite step up from the modifieds, you can expect the engines to perform pretty similar relative to each other in those as well. So with that in mind, if you're going to be doing any heads up racing with one of these, you're also going to want to run either the three rotor or inline six turbo combinations as we're looking at right here. A 5.650 248 for the turbo 3 rotor and a 5.633 247 for the inline 6. There you have it. I hope this was helpful for those of you new to bounty drag racing and hopefully maybe a little interesting for you veterans. Whichever of those you are, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, keep it in your own damn lane.